and welcome to this conversation brought to you by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer, and today I'm sitting with Minnesota photographer Katie Cannon. Hello, Katie. Hello, Jed. <laughs> so now, full disclosure, we have known each other for a while. A long time. Um, we grew up in the same central Illinois town. Same hometown. Um, yep. A lot of the same, same school, friends, groups of people. And whatnot. So we've we've known each other for a while. So th- this isn't someone that I have met yesterday or even this year. No. We have decided to call this episode "Off the Beaten Path," and I and and I think that title is very fitting because you are a family, farm, and food photographer. I am. Alliter- alliteration there. I like that. Yes, that kind of just came out of nowhere one day well, and I liked works. it. I liked it. Works. It works. Yeah. It's brandable. It's, yeah. it's a good marketing tool. Yeah. Go go through that and just kind of describe what that means. Sure. Well, it's kind of funny now that I think about that, where that came from. It kind of um, says a lot about me. One day I started thinking about all the different things that I photograph and I, in hindsight, thought, oh, hmm, families and farms and and food and it all works together and look at that it's a nice little package so that kind of that that's kind of me in a nutshell but I I started out first of all I'm a part-time photographer Mm -hmm. I um I actually I know a lot of photographers started out in family you know people somebody usually and in my opinion um, somebody has a baby and then they get mm. a nice camera and they start taking some pictures and someone else says, Hey, you've got a nice camera and you took mm-hmm. some good pictures of your own kids. How about you come over and take some pictures of my kids? And so a lot of people yeah. that I know. Seems like got, children or weddings. Got their One of weddings. The two. Yeah. I would say weddings too. But yeah. I mean, and everybody always asks, Oh, you're a photographer. So you must shoot weddings. You must right. be so busy. And I say, no weddings are very, that's a very different market, you know, and, and that's something that I, I dabbled in very, 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 very briefly. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I, I let those experts in weddings (laughs) do that. But no, I started, um, I actually started on the food side. I was, um, a food blogger kind of Mm -hmm. website person, um, for a while and I started on the food side, started photographing things that didn't move. How easy is that, <laughs> right? So yeah. I had the, I was the one who had the nice camera and I was photographing in every restaurant that I went to. This was before anybody would take, you know, all the Instagram photos of, right. of their food where a waiter would come up and say, oh, um, I, I'm sorry, excuse me, you know, cause I would have my nice camera out in a restaurant. Oh. And they Did would you actually get in trouble a couple times. You know, no, they they would ask me about it, right. and um, I specifically would just say I'm not using flash, I'm not hmm. bothering anybody. But that was back in those days. That was back, you know, 2008, around that time yeah. when that was a that was very strange. <laughs> I would get asked all the time, and then it's interesting because you know, as I kept bringing my nice camera and I started getting work as a food photographer, and I was writing too suddenly it became so commonplace right. and then people stopped asking. Right. And, and in fact, you would actually start to see people with, you know, the waiters or whoever would, would bring it down and, or, or put your plate down and make sure that everything was kind of nice for you, right. you know, <laughs> right. Presentations that much more of a bigger deal. Yeah. Cause they expected it. Right. And now it is ex- expected. Somebody at the table is going to take a picture right. of their food. Yeah. And ironically, it's not always me now. So <laughs> I take well, a lot of food photos. I mean, you see my Instagram feed. I take a lot of food right. photos, but I, I typically save that for the professional world for me right now. So I, uh, I do still photograph. So yeah, for some online websites for, mm-hmm. um, and that's enjoyable. But I, I kind of keep that mainly to professional. So I, you know, I was photographing all this non-moving stuff and non-talking stuff. I was thinking non-talking, yeah. non-running around, non-complaining, non-hitting, non-screaming. non Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I didn't have to, you know edit out scratches from the day before or, (laughs) you know, or they inevitably fell on the stairs on the way into the studio. Exactly. But yeah. So, you know, friends said, Hey, you have a nice camera. Mm -hmm. Kind of happened that same way. Can you take some pictures of, of our family? And I started doing some family photography, which was really fun. Um, and I still do family photography. I would still, I would say about 
a third of my business, maybe to a half is family photography, but it's mainly in that fall time frame. Mm, yeah. The, the big push for yeah, the seasonal. big season. Yeah. Right. And I do some newborns. Um, I do newborn shoots here and there, obviously babies are born at any time. Um, and so, you know, throughout the year I'll do newborn shoots too. And what's the farm piece? The farm piece, yeah. Yeah. So the farm piece, I I actually completely fell into that farm piece, and it's something that I am I feel very lucky that I fell into because mm. I was doing this nice variety of food and families, and on a very part time basis, as I had said, I um and and actually I was at the time working as a newborn photographer in mm. um one of the local hospitals, and um. Which, which I really enjoyed and I got a lot of experience out of, you know, going into the newborn, um, working with newborns in a hospital setting on the timelines that we had to make our product. But so I, I, I was pregnant with my daughter and um, I, had, I had previously made a contact with, a, uh, uh, with Minnesota Cooks, which is a program through the Minnesota Farmers Union. Mm-hmm. And they are at the state fair, um, and they do a, a program, a day long kind of cooking demonstrations, local food um, talk, and handing out awesome samples, usually non fried samples at the fair, <laughs> um, featuring local farmers in Minnesota, I should say, and Minnesota chefs. So I had gone there on, on an assignment. And I had photographed that, and I just loved it. So I made contact with with that group, and I said, if you ever need a photographer, you know, let me know. So, so I you didn't, reached out to them. I did. Yeah, mm-hmm. I reached out to them. They liked my photos that I had taken, covering it for a website that I was shooting for. Mm-hmm. And I had, you know, I had lunch with the, the main um, program manager and kind of made that contact and just said, this, this is, this is great. It's, it's food, which I love to do. You know, mm-hmm. I love to photograph. I, it's, it's, um, local as well, local food and, and I hadn't, I hadn't really put together yet the farm piece because the farms right. obviously aren't at the state fair, right. you know, but it's people, it's food. And, and it was really interesting to me. So of course, I, you know, I didn't hear anything for a while. And then, as I said, I was pregnant with my daughter and I got a call and, um, they said, we're looking for a new Minnesota Cooks photographer for the upcoming calendar. And, um, and I said, oh, that's great. Um, and this was March and they said, uh, we'll, we'll start shooting probably in, in May. And I said, well, okay, that's great. I am like nine months pregnant right now. <laughs> so, um, so of course, yeah, so I'm in. Two, mo- I'm two in. months to have the baby and then get started. And get ready. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, so yeah, I, I, I accepted the job. I didn't really know what I was getting into. And it turns out that it really put together a lot of things that I, that I love. That's the farm piece. How do you handle the monetization or the revenue? piece of that for your business? I freelance for them. So all the work that I do besides my, you know, just my family business is my own work. I'm, Mm -hmm. I freelance. So I I freelance for websites, um, and then for the farmer's union for the Minnesota cooks program. So I actually, I do a contract with them every year and I, I, now I know, you know, their full scope of what they need Mm -hmm. to accomplish that program from the shooting of the calendar to sometimes we'll do, well, we'll have multiple meetings and then we'll have, um, you know, sometimes we'll do new headshots for the team or group photos mm-hmm. and then also the event at the state fair too. Right. So I put that all in one contract and say this, you know, this is my rate. Right. Um, and that's grown over time. I mean, I've done it for seven years. How did you know what to do even at the beginning? Like were, were you a fish out of water or did you have? Yeah, some- <laughs> totally. <laughs> Totally. Yeah, like like most of us are. I mean, yeah, aren't we all? Like well, we start yeah. somewhere and you right. say, Oh man, I underestimated. <laughs> well, you just kind of threw a dart at the board and just had a place to start. Yeah. Well, but it's interesting though, because that was actually the first time that I had to do a like an think about myself as an hourly rate. Like the because before I was doing um freelance for different websites. And mm-hmm. you know, and when you're doing online, like I'm gonna use food photography because that's that's my you know, basis of knowledge, you know, each, each job that I get isn't for that much money. Right. You know, it's, it's, it's a small amount of money that we're making. And sometimes you get other benefits where, you know, if you get to eat what you're shooting or whatever, (laughs) I mean, that's kind of nice. That's about all I would need. When you love food, like, like I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but you know, that, that shoot can translate into more revenue mm-hmm. if the restaurant likes your photos or, you know, and they wanted to buy the gallery that you've already shot sure. or, so that's kind of translates that. But this was the first time that I had to actually sit down and think, oh, okay, outside of like being a family photographer, I know what it takes to shoot as a family photographer. Mm. Um, you know, I know about how long it takes, even with feisty toddlers, how long it's going to take for me to get the photos that I need mm-hmm. to create this gallery for my clients. And so I started to think about, oh, I've got travel time. I've got the time on the farm. I've right. got all the editing, you know, thinking about it as a full package, as you know, in the calendar is a different way of thinking about it. You know, an individual shoot. This had to have a cohesive kind of feel. The calendar right. did. So, you know, so you kind of approach things a little differently. So you've kind shoot. of gone from food to families to farm. To farms. And you've used the knowledge that you've learned in each space yeah. to help you with the yeah. other space. Yeah. And so, I mean, through all of this, I have learned a lot of lessons. So now I do have an hourly rate that I mm-hmm. think of myself as mm-hmm. or what I know what the actual shoot is going to be. Right. Um, for the farms, you know, I do have like mileage, you know, obviously for travel. Right. There's that. But then there was the lesson that I learned where I said, oh, my gosh. I mean, the first year I just said, oh, sure, you know, any travel, it's just that reimbursement. And then I realized, well, I could be going up to Grand Marais. Right, right. Which (laughs) which is is five or six hours away. Five hours, yeah. Or I could be going to Hutchinson, which is 45 minutes. So, you know, lesson learned the next year into my contract, I wrote Mm -hmm. in if it's greater than 150 miles round trip. Right. There's an extra hundred dollars sure. or whatever. Whatever. I don't it is. even remember the rate. Don't quote me on that. Right. Um, <laughs> I won't. Please. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, I learned lessons in over seven years. Now, I, you know, I feel like I've, I've kind of figured that out for me, what works. So, with the family photography, kind of the middle piece, I guess. Mm-hmm. I can't even remember what order I set them in initially. But with the family piece being kind of what you gravitated to before the farm piece. Mm-hmm. And now that comprises a third to a half of your business. Mm-hmm. Um, what? How do you how do you monetize that piece? What's your What's your business model look like? Oh, that has changed significantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've I've had so I started out very very um, intimidated by photographing people because yeah. expectations around people mm-hmm. and what they look like and their family that was daunting. You know, remember I went from photographing things that don't move plates of spaghetti. Right. Right. Or have opinions or have opinions. (laughs) Exactly. To suddenly somebody says, can you take family photos? And you know, there's a lot of opinions, as you said, (laughs) that go into self-reflection once they get a gallery back. So, you know, I went out and I, I know, I know for a while there, and I know that you would say that I still (laughs) lowball myself. (laughs) Well, most likely. (laughs) Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> but I did go out, you know, just to get experience. Mm-hmm. And I think that actually what, you know, I, I started out and I had some mentors. And I remember I remember one day she was like, how much are you charging for a family session? I told mm. her and she was like, you have to increase mm. your prices. You mm-hmm. have to. And I have done a couple price increases. In fact, my sister the other day was like, you know, so and so was was charging this much money for a family session, and I was telling him that you charge this, and I was like, "Uh, yeah, you're off, way off." And she asked <laughs> me how much I charge because you know I don't I don't charge my sister, and she's like, "Of course, oh, okay, right." So it's I mean it's it's right. it's 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 not a lot by the grand scheme of photographers out there, but right. I feel I feel like I've worked up to, um, to a rate that I feel good about. How much is it? You know I'm gonna ask. I know you're gonna ask. I'm trying to remember. Uh, two seventy five. Okay. For a family session that includes digital downloads, thirty to forty images. Okay. Black and white in color. Right. So then, any products would be separate than that. Any products, yeah. So they can purchase from my site, or mm-hmm. they can um, take. And so take you files. show them with, with an online gallery. I show them an online cal- gallery. Yep. I don't I don't have any products where I don't give them the gallery. It's and not, that is my So they're going to get they're going to get something. Always. They're getting the digital downloads. Yes. Right. Sorry. Um but you know you you asked me originally what does that business look like and and I 
I did get, I did become a newborn photographer during that time. And I, I feel like I did get a lot more experience and Mm -hmm. that's, and that's where then I felt good about myself and the product that I was giving that I could do those rate increases. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'll bring up kind of a topic that I know is probably maybe a little bit different than, you know, than what the normal kind of advice somebody would give is, you know, you're working a lot. Like I, I was working, I was doing mainly, as I said, my, my family business is in the fall. Right. People want their holiday cards, right? They want their holiday photos. And so I was working a lot and my husband has a job where he works a lot, a lot, lot. Yeah. Just all the time. A lot more than me. Right. (laughs) Um, cause I'm part time. I take care of my daughter too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, weekends just got really, really tough. Mm -hmm. And so I started to look at my weekends because I'm, I also have a hard time saying, and you have to also schedule during the week, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, you're just giggling over there. <laughs> I am just like loading the gun for you over here. <laughs> but my solution to that may be a little off the beaten path. Uh-huh. Instead of raising my prices and doing less work, what right. I decided because I liked what I was doing and I liked my clients who had mm-hmm. grown with me since, you know, I started. Right. You had them for a while. Since I started at $75, you okay. know. Yeah, I felt I I felt like they had grown with me and I and I and I liked shooting their families and I didn't want to lose their business. So what I ended up doing was I introduced for my business a mini session, which I had never done before. Right. Mm-hmm. And so now my model, my main model of family photography is to offer the mini session or a full family session. What's the difference? The difference is 20 minutes of shooting is for a mini, a mini session, session, right? Um it is 12 to 15 images, although mm-hmm. I'm pretty generous. And, you know, if I, if I get up to 20, I'm, I like my clients. With 24 right? images. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Again, I, you know, cause I, I want them to have these photos, these memories. Um, and it's 185 versus 275. Okay. But I looked at it and I said, I want to keep shooting and I, and I really like it. And so instead of spending an hour and a half each shoot, yeah. now I do concentrated mini session dates and I only schedule a mini session when there's at least one other mini session attached to it. So I'm making the most of my time. Right, You're going to have two at least. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. by doing that now I'm still shooting a lot. I'm still super busy in my opinion um, or what's busy for me. But now what I say in the fall is I'm only going to work one day out of the weekend. You know, okay. so before I was like, so you have okay, some boundaries that some you've boundaries. put in place. Yeah. Right. And, you know, I do have some during the week shoots too, but, um, I, you know, this way I can, I can concentrate. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have one weekend day and I'm just going to kill it, you mm-hmm. know, and I'll do a lot, you know, many more clients. Let's say I do six or seven mini sessions, whereas normally I would only do like three and well, and they're like, shoots. and they're like twenty minutes a piece. It they're sounds to me minutes. like you've evolved from a business perspective. Would that is that fair to say? I think so. I've evolved for what works for me, right? You know, and so, and then I also know going into the back end, the editing, I can, I mean, I can hammer out those mini sessions really. Well, there's quickly. less images. There's less images, so a lot less images. So you know, whereas I might shoot a hundred images in a family session that I'm, you know, going through to get the thirty to forty images, you know, I'm. If I'm looking for 12 to 15 images, I might only shoot 30 images. Okay, so you that's know? a great that's a great point. So you're All right, so let's let's put this into perspective. Mm-hmm. You've gone from 275 to 185, mm-hmm. but you've gone from an hour and a half for shooting to, to 20 minutes. 20 minutes. And you've gone from I don't know how many images you can rattle off in an hour and a half, but mm-hmm. I know how many Vicky can do mm-hmm. and it's a lot. To to like 30 images. And frankly, the expectation of families too I mean, I think a lot of people, a lot of people hesitate to say, oh, I'm going to do a mini session, 20 minutes. I don't know that you can get, you know, my, my family's kind of tough. I have Mm. a big family Mm -hmm. or I have a toddler that just doesn't cooperate. But honestly, 20 minutes is a lot of time. If you keep it quick, you keep it snappy, keep it tight, you keep it tight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then also, I mean, frankly, a lot of kids, that's, that's all the time span that they really want to give you anyway. So if I do a full session with a, with a cranky Mm -hmm. toddler, Chances are, you know, I'm shooting for 20 minutes and then they have to take a snack break. 
Well, and you also or, have the dad or Uncle Frank that is that the last thing they want to do is be there in yeah. the first place. So sometimes yeah. those are worse than the kids. Yeah. So now <laughs> yeah. what I do in my mini sessions, in my 20 minutes, I have it structured. So the first 10 minutes is usually going through one series of getting a couple family poses, the kids individual, and then the parents individual, mm-hmm. and then use the second 10 minutes because, you know, who knows? You, you do lose some kids after 10 minutes, too. Depending so you try on... to nail it in the first 10 minutes and then get a little more organic and, and open-ended say, in the second 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, let's, let's walk down the path a little bit mm-hmm. and we'll do it again, mm-hmm. you know. And then you get that second set of images and then you can pick, you know, that's, which that's ones work best. This, it sounds like a, a, a better model. Maybe it's for both sides of the camera, too. So here's, so here's my devil's advocate softball to you. Okay. What what do you say or think about the whole? Well, what's really happened is that your mini sessions are now your sessions. Because do, do, do you still book sessions? Because yes. from a business standpoint, I wouldn't want to if I was you. I'd be like, oh, let's keep it tight to the mini sessions. It sounds like all the advantages are there from in, your perspective. In the it- fall, I I I do <clears throat> a lot of education around the mini session mm-hmm. because of my time. Mm-hmm. If somebody is willing to go during the week, I don't push it as much because it's a different time that I'm working with. Right. And I've and I've tried different models. Like one year I so one year I said I had the mini session and I had the full session and I said it's a fifty dollar premium if you book on the weekends. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Right. Everybody booked on the weekends and I was making a lot of money because I was right. doing full sessions. Great. But then I I thought, but that's not what I'm You still don't want to do it. That's yeah, that's not what right. I'm after. I'm looking for a balance mm-hmm. and I'm looking to shoot and I'm looking to give a good product for my client. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, you know, I was like, oh, great. Well, I know I can <laughs> charge more now, but it does, which is then when I went to 275. Um, yeah. But that, that wasn't accomplishing it for me. That wasn't ultimately it's, what I was looking it's for. It's interesting. We, we wanted to phase out of weddings. And so to, rather than quitting them, we decided to charge double and we booked more. Yeah. Like the opposite of what we wanted to happen. And even what we thought would happen happened. It was like, well, we double our prices. We're not, no one's going to book us, but we can still say we offer them. Yeah. But then it was like, instead of, you know, 26 weddings, we had 48 weddings. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this isn't. And then you start thinking about what is it that I actually (laughs) wanted? You know, you just, oh, I actually wanted to just limit the number. And that's, Mm -hmm. that's kind of how I was. I was like, Mm -hmm. I still want to shoot. I still love this. And, you know, I, 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 the thrill of, you know, it's family coming in and, you know, being able to get them these great photos and these memories. And, and honestly, I mean, that's a manageable amount of photos too, 12 to 15. Yeah. You know, I had a client, um, I had a friend actually, when I first started in the business and I, I called her when I was back in Illinois and I said, can I borrow your kids? I just need to practice shooting. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> you can yes. have them as long as you want. Exactly. <laughs> so I took some photos and I, and then I, I called her and I said, oh my goodness, I, you know, I, I've got so many great photos. This is really fun. You know, how, you know, how many are you looking for? And she was like, honestly, whittle it down for me. Right. I want to see the best five to 10 photos. And that was eye opening for me. Mm. Very eye opening. Because you said earlier, and you've told me this before, that you just want everyone to have everything. Yeah. Is that, that's kind of where you're coming from. Yeah. Right, Lo- loosely stated. But yeah, I want like, them to I enjoy their them, photos. I want them to have them. Yeah, I right. don't want to shoot something that then's not, that then is not going to be used or enjoyed mm-hmm. by them. I don't want them to sit in an online gallery or on my computer. What about um, th- those digital files just sitting on their end? Well, that's their problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's their choice. At least you've done your job, right? That's their choice. But right. I, I mean. So I had a, I had, I have a friend up here who, you know, I now do her photos, but before, before we were good friends, she used another photographer mm-hmm. and she was asking me questions and I was very uncomfortable because I had my opinions, but <laughs> I didn't want to disrespect anyone. Of course not. More established or, oh, you yeah. know, or, I get it. or whatever. I didn't want to disrespect, but frankly, one day, you know, she had these photos and they were, they were very nice, very nice. And she said, I, so I, I got a quote to get a canvas, a framed canvas, mm-hmm. you know, I wanted it to go in my stairway and mm-hmm. it was, I mean, I don't know the size of it, like a good size, 16 by 20 maybe. Mm-hmm. And she told me 
how much that product was going to be. Mm-hmm. A- and I just couldn't even help it. I mean, as, as nice as I was trying to be and trying not to offend anybody, I was like, oh, okay. okay. Um, I was like, I, honestly, I, I don't have an answer for you. I said, that is so out of the realm of... <laughs> Of of what I can even fathom charging <laughs> that I I don't even know what to say. If you are willing to pay that yeah. and that's going to mean a lot to you, yeah. then I guess go for it. <laughs> but out of the entire gallery, you know, I, and I saw like 30 beautiful mm-hmm. images, she right. picked one for her Christmas cards mm-hmm. and she picked this one framed photo. Mm-hmm. And, and and I don't even know that that is like now, like the photo that she would want to be. In fact, I don't even know that if that's even hanging in her stairway anymore, but that was a lot of money that she spent to have that right. done. Right. And then, she, and then she didn't even get the rest of the photos, I not see. even to print a little five by seven to put, you know, anywhere in somebody's room or, you know, on the bedside or so charging anything. Charging, it's hard to say what a lot of money is because that's, completely subjective and circumstantial in some cases yeah. but what what is it about charging that bothers you cuz i'm just looking at your face i have the advantage <laughs> of seeing your expressions yeah yeah you know when we're talking about this well um i given the fact that you and i just talked about how i just did my christmas card i think you have a little backstory that everybody else doesn't <laughs> right. have well i i know a lot more than anybody else does at this point with, and, regarding and, you yeah and frankly i mean j- to sum that up just that i i just look at it and say what would i be willing to pay and what would i want out okay. of it and frankly i don't have a lot of art up in my house i don't mm-hmm. have a lot of um photos even printed which is kind of funny mm-hmm. um but i and I have dreams of doing that someday, but, um, you do, I do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, in books, you right. know, I want to have those for my daughter to see, not just digitally. Right. Um, but I'm very selective, whether it's an art print or a family photo mm. of what I want printed, but I want to have access to all of them so that I can have them and show them. I mean, you know, I, I go through and I, sh- I've shown my daughter all the photos from when I gave birth, you know, right. to her right. and, she loves seeing every single photo, um, even though they're still on my computer, of when I was pregnant and she was in my belly, you know, and getting to see all of those. And if I didn't have access to those, I, I mean, I think that I would be missing out. Let me, let me throw a scenario out to you. I think that's a, it's a valid point. That's, that's a, I think it's a very common perspective. But let me throw, I'm going to okay. throw this piece out at you okay. right now. This is completely off script. And, and I had no idea that this is where this was going to go. But oh, boy. Throw I can't help it. You got me thinking. <laughs> um, let's, let me, how do, how, let's put yourself in this position. You're sitting down with somebody. You're looking at uh, the photos of their family that you shot for them. Mm-hmm. And the, the, let's, let's call it the mom. Mm-hmm. The mom is looking, and she's emotional and ecstatic and super excited. And she wants um, the 20 by 24 for the stairway, mm-hmm. uh, framed canvas print. And you say something like, "Yes, that'll be thirteen hundred dollars." What, how, what, what sort of feelings go through your mind when I'm describing that scenario? Well, one, I never sit down with my clients, so I kind of have a hard time picturing that. Right. I would love, to, I would love to see a client ecstatic mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that's the first and foremost. Um, secondly, I would have a very hard time just choking that out of my mouth <laughs> okay that's what i that's what i wanted to get to because i believe i you. mean I, I think i actually just started sweating a little <laughs> i'm not even kidding my my palm this is not we've been talking on this long enough that i'm not nervous from the podcast yeah, you're, you feel comfortable with the conversation but now now what we're palms actually are sweating chad thanks a lot <laughs> the content is getting to you it is well i wondered that that's why i threw that out and, and here's why because this gets me to the fourth F that, that I had briefly mentioned to you earlier when I saw that we were mm-hmm. going to talk about farms, food, and family. Mm-hmm. That fourth F being fear, right? And, and the reason I say it is because, A, I, I, it's like a big part of my life, fear, one way or the other. And, and it's also a big part of a lot of people that I talk to about this specifically. Yes. Now, people have all the reasons they have for doing 
what they do and the way they do things and how they do things. And I respect that, you know, you can do whatever you want. It's your business, right? But my concern is that people are doing themselves and their clients a potential disservice, right? So I see where you're going with this. You do? This. Get oh, it I now? Don't, no, I get, coming it. Around? I, I get it. I get I, it. All right, good. That, good. I, <laughs> kind of goes back to an earlier conversation that we had. Right, right. So, and that's, that's where I'm taking I'm ready it. to talk about it. Like you, <laughs> you, you not doing that is, is primarily because you're scared to do it. Is that fair to say? Um, I don't know that it, I, I don't know in that particular instance, that is fear. I just think makes, just makes you, your palms sweat. I would propose a fourth <laughs> F. Or fifth F. A fifth F. Okay, fifth what's F. that? Fair. 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 Okay. That just came to me too. All right, I'm in. What, Light what? bulb. Well, and it's just, you know, what is a fair price? As we're talking about pricing. Okay. And fair is very subjective. Of course. It's very. Kind of my, but that's kind of my point. Yes. And, and, and fear does, does very much get tied into fair because... Uh-huh. Not only do you want to have what you consider a fair price, and also you want to be considered fair in your client's eyes. Oh, and I got a story about that one too. Um, (laughs) In your client's eyes, but sometimes it is fear that keeps us from trying. You know, sure. every time I did a a, a price increase, Mm -hmm. there was fear before stating that. Good. There was definitely fear, and I would send out the email of, you know, somebody, a return client would say, oh, I'm looking for dates in September, and mm. I would email back and say, that's so great. This is my availability, and just so you know, these are my new prices. <laughs> oh, there was fear there, you know. It definitely yeah. was. You kind of, like, tried to sneak it in at the end. <laughs> but, no, seriously. But at, at the same time, I felt I was being fair. I felt that I, you know, it wasn't like every year I was doing a price increase mm-hmm. or every six months or, you know, whatever it was. I felt that I was getting, as I was getting experience, I was increasing to the, you know, I mean, let's all be honest with ourselves. Our very first photo sessions out there, don't we wish we could go back and, and move them into the, sure. into a better lighting and, and yeah. our editing was different and, right. and everything. So, you know, we get better. Mm-hmm. And I felt that I was increasing for the better product that I was right. providing given my experience right. in the industry. So I felt I was being fair. Now, going back to the pricing of a canvas, mm-hmm. that is not something that I would pay in my home. Okay. And therefore... I have a hard time feeling it would be fair because of that, despite the fear. Okay, so what? How? How or, about l- the? Let's just say this too. Okay. So, let's say I'm working for some, like when I was a newborn photographer. Uh-huh. If that was the price that I had to present on behalf of my employer to a client, that you know that that would be hard as well because okay. it, it's not really what i consider fair sure i was the photographer but that's just the price because you're working for somebody because i'm working for right. somebody but there would be that fear there definitely would be that fear in there that i would that i would i regardless of if my if my employer thought that was fair so your concept of fair is based on because it's we're talking about subjective terms your concept of fair is based on what you think would be a good price if you were purchasing it yes not the i am not my own client you know i'm not i'm not a client of myself that's in other interesting. words interesting right that's why yeah. yeah right i i say this because and you know my dad oh yeah right? I know my dad. dad walked into our studio yeah right and said i can't this was 15 years ago yeah and he looked around and he said i can't believe people pay this much for pictures. Ah, oh, thanks, Dad. Right. Well, there's that. But then I was like, yeah, that's, well, so, that's so odd coming from your dad. Well, <laughs> it wasn't odd to me. I wasn't surprised at okay. all. Because he's not gonna he's not going to do it. Yeah. Right. So to me, I wasn't surprised in that I knew that he he's not our client. And I'm like mm-hmm. you in that I don't charge my parents anything anyway. We've done work for them and we've photographed obviously our family portraits. And I don't I don't charge my mom, mm-hmm. um, but my my dad's not my client, and that he doesn't value the work or the experience mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. My dad would rather, he's going to go spend the money on golf, Mm -hmm. right? And there's a lot of people that would say, I can't believe you blew $250 on a round of golf. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so, so there's just what, what, what is it that you value? So I'm, I'm asking because I'm curious about how, how that concept strikes you. You know, like th- here's here's a quick story. You're kind of blowing my mind here, Jed. Well, that that that's that's the intent. I didn't well, know you, if it would work, but no, you are, but you are because it's all about our frame of reference. It's yes. all about what we, you know, what we what we take into our business with us, and yeah. this is what I take. I take my own spending values. Yes, into you do. my business. You do. So here's here's a quick scenario. If you're in a position where, let's say, you have an image out there. And it's a nature or landscape or a I don't know food, even a food image. What have you doesn't really matter for the purposes of this question. But somebody sees it and they love it, mm-hmm. and they they give you an offer, mm-hmm. and they say, "Hey, you know what? I want I want the rights to this digital file. I'll pay you five thousand dollars." You take the five thousand dollars. But it's not fair, is it? Oh, in that case, it depends on who it is, because clearly. <laughs> well, see here you go. Uh, oh, no, here you I, go. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's interesting because, you know, there are different clients. So, you know, I have had national magazines contact me Mm -hmm. when they have come across my photos Mm -hmm. to buy them. And yeah, I do increase it because I know where they're coming. So it's fair if it's Coca-Cola. Because I know where they're coming from Uh and I know what they're they're capable of spending Uh versus, you know, if it was a friend... If it was a friend who came up to me and said, oh my gosh, that, that is amazing and... Let's even say they said, I want to license this this photo for my business and I'll right. give you a thousand dollars. I would say that's that's not how much it is. But it's bec- but that would be because they're your friend. Well, client friend, yeah. Somebody oh that's oh geez, you're backing me into a corner here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. I, I I hope I'm not making you t- I want to make you a little bit uncomfortable. I don't want to offend you. No, no. I think it's very in- I, I I find it I find it very interesting. I I just listened to your podcast on ethics, and I found that I feel like I feel like we're at that kind of crossroad. Well, with, in a know, way, in the, a way, the, the editing concepts, the nose, yes. you know, in a, yeah. in a way, the concepts are very similar. By the way, listen to that podcast; it's really good. <laughs> yeah, that that was fun. I didn't expect that to yeah. go where it did either. Uh, but I I I think it's very interesting because there aren't. This is an industry um, like a lot of artistic industries where there aren't necessarily standards, mm-hmm. uh, and that people get to people get to determine what their time is worth for one thing, you know, and then what their, what their work is worth, what the digital files or what the product, I get to determine what a wall portrait from me costs. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's why I'm coming at it because I've seen your work. It's fantastic. So if someone was to ask me what's fair to to pay for a, you know, a 40 by 60 from Katie Cannon, I'd be like, get your wallet out. And that would be fair in my, in, in my mind. Right. And so there, there's a story where, you know, Picasso's, um, sitting down at a table at a restaurant outside. I have no idea if this is true. Somebody told me this and a lady was walking by and he's drawing on a napkin. Right. And she sees the drawing and she says that that's the most amazing thing. I'd like to, can I purchase that from you? And he said, sure, it'll be $5,000. And she freaks out, you know, and, and is all offended that he would choose to charge her $5,000 mm-hmm. for a napkin. And he said, well, you know, that's fine. And he wipes his mouth with the napkin and puts it in his pocket. And that was the end of that. But my point is, that's up to him, right? Because, I mean, now it's easy for us in hindsight to see, yeah, 10 minutes of Picasso's time is most certainly worth $5,000. But he knew that then, right? Mm-hmm. And who knows how much money the lady had. Maybe she had... Five thousand dollars to spend. Maybe she didn't yeah. have five dollars to spend. Yeah. But is it relevant? <laughs> I mean, maybe it all kind of goes back to th- that. That's that's a tough one, and I'm I'm sure that that story is true. I'm well, sure. Who knows? I'm just sure of it. No, but it, but it, it does. I mean, going going back to like the question of if somebody said I'd like to license that photo. Mm-hmm. I mean, I. Th- I ha- I would have a hard time ever thinking that I would say anything more than like two to three times my normal if I knew who the client was, mm-hmm. and that would never be even be close to a thousand dollars for an image, you know. Mm-hmm. And so I I yeah I, I'm I'm 
having a hard time with that one. Putting see, it, putting it. Uh, I see, I see your your wheels are turning. <laughs> yeah, they're turning. Definitely. I'm here. I'm here to submit to you because I you I know you've joked around with me saying, oh, you should raise your prices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I I still take that stand only because I know I know what the quality of your work is and I know who you are as a person, right? And so I know that you're able to offer your clients a phenomenal experience. You know, because they, you know, people can go anywhere and get photos done. But people that come to you aren't just coming to you because you do a great job artistically or photographically. They're coming to you because you're you. Because you have your personality and you're able to offer your experience. And nobody else can do that. Yeah, but I'm also providing an experience again, bringing in with it who I am, bringing into each session who I am. Yeah. And and maybe this is where fear comes in, but something I do fear is if I if I were to stretch myself, mm-hmm. would I be able to sleep at night? Would I would I worry and, What's and the, what would be the worry about, what would you worry about? Am I truly giving each time I go to a session, mm. am I truly going to be able to meet that standard that that price dictates? Mm-hmm. I know what I can do. And there are so many things in photography that, that are out of our control. Mm-hmm. There just are. And, mm-hmm. you know, and frankly, every client that comes in and says, I want this photo and they show me a Pinterest right. <laughs> picture, I'm, I'm just about <laughs> like, you know, okay, well, that was taken at sunset and it's, it's you know, 10 a.m. <laughs> yeah, it's 10 a.m. Right. And, you know, right. your kids aren't going to do that. <laughs> I can and see you don't, that now. You don't look like that. And this isn't, this isn't yeah. under those conditions, right? But I know that I can give them something special. Right. Either but way. there's just yes. that, that, I guess that that's just illustrating the, another level of expectation mm-hmm. that would, I know. For myself that that would that would keep me up at night yeah i think you're in inter- again you're injecting yourself into it right i am mm-hmm. i am mm-hmm. because i am my business yeah and and sure. i i have to wonder would i approach my client and the situation differently if i had that expectation would i give them the same ease of service and comfort you know with what i do if i had that high expectation with that price that, so you would be more set. you would be more uncomfortable because to you it's so much more money and then you go back to that would I pay this myself type of scenario, right? Yeah. If I if I can even write the email to say, by the way, I've right. raised my prices. Could, I mean, we'll if see. If you could even get that far. Yeah, my right. hands might slip off the computer. They'd be so sweaty. I, I totally understand. I think it's an interesting it is. thing to think about. It is. It is. And I think, I, I definitely think underlying everything that we do is a little bit of fear. Mm-hmm. And it's, I mean, for me, it's been baby steps and I can see it. You know, I, I did not seek out work professionally as a photographer. I, you know, I had, I was blogging for myself and I had a website contact me and show me that they thought, you know, they, they put some faith in me and I said, oh, wow. Okay. And then there, then there came, became some expectations. Right. And you know, at that point, some things definitely got less fun. Right. I understand. Sure. Some things got less fun. Well, because then you have deadlines and you have people that are expecting a certain level of yeah. craftsmanship and timing yeah. and everything else. Right. You know, and in certain parts of my business, I have been able to then change the scenario. I no longer want to go out at night and photograph a poorly lit plate of food <laughs> and submit that as something I'm proud of because I'm not you know I'm going to I'm going to change those circumstances and I'm going to say we do this during the day Mm -hmm. when we have nice natural light you know or or whatever it is and so um but with but I guess going back to the family session as you said you know I I don't know that anything anything would change for me to then dictate that I'm not changing any circumstances I'm just putting a higher price on it and it just doesn't it it, it doesn't compute, know. does it? I don't sleep well at night sometimes anyway. And I'm just like, I mean, I was up last night worrying about oh, who all knows. Well, I'm the king of worrying at night. I, I get, Are you? I, yeah. If I get four or five hours of sleep almost every night, I'm I'm doing really good. 
So I, I understand that piece. I'm just here to submit to you, yeah. oh so humbly, yeah. that I get that nothing would change from the experience that you offered. And I'm also stating that it doesn't have to, it wouldn't need to, because you already offer such an amazing experience and an amazing product to go along with it. And I just submit back that <laughs> I I have to wonder whether I would still enjoy it as much. Well, you might not. And, and that's a good point. And that is, and that is frankly, um, one of the things that really drives me right now with photography, mm-hmm. being a part-time photographer, being someone who can't specialize in one thing because I need to, you know, be on the open road going to a farm and then I need to be photographing a toddler and then I need that plate of food that does not move. Right. I mean, absolutely doesn't move, you know, and I, you know, I think, I think, you know, I do it because I love it. Right. And I have controlled and said no to a lot of things that I don't love. Sure. You know, good for you, by the way. I that's hard to do. Mm -hmm. I don't love doing events. Right. I don't. Right. You get that one time, that one shot. Here's the event. Yeah. Well, it's not only that. I mean, (laughs) you're going to laugh at this. I, the fear comes in with saying, can I, can I, you know, going in and getting pictures of people when they Mm -hmm. know that I'm taking their picture, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is weird because families I have no problem with but for some reason at events I'm like just let them enjoy their dreams right. like let them have their plate well of you're food. in a position where you have to constantly solicit yeah. your yes. services to them yes. while you're there right? yeah exactly that's that's a good way of saying right. it so yeah. yeah I've said no to a lot of things and I'm, I'm frankly at a at a spot where I really enjoy what I'm doing if if I were to expand my business right now I don't think it would be despite our conversation to increase my prices I think it would be to dive deeper into one of my areas that I am focused on. I would either do a deeper dive into doing more of food or more of farms Uh or just more shoots of the same just to grow that way, you know? So to do more for the same prices. I think so. Right. I get it. Because I like it. Sure. And you, and you're, what I heard you say and we can we can conclude. I don't need to draw this out with you anymore, as I see that it's it's can, it can be uncomfortable to talk. Oh about no, this it's stuff. fine. I'm and just thinking your, about it. I appreciate your vulnerability and your willingness to do this. But what I'm all I'm submitting is that um, to what I or at least what I heard you say is that to charge more at some point you would feel uncomfortable because you're charging that much money and you wouldn't want to do it because it would make you feel uncomfortable. Is yeah. that right? That goes in, and that takes me right back to when we were doubling our prices for weddings. This happened to me is that we doubled them again and we booked even more. And it's at one point we were like, I, I said to Vicki, I said, well, we're going to charge $25,000 for a wedding. And she said, I'm out. And I said, why are you out? I said, we're going to book it. And she said, that's why I'm out. She said, I don't, I, I don't, I would not feel comfortable charging that much money for a wedding. And then I was, I was, of course, I'll grab a camera. I'll do it myself. You know, I'll learn how to photograph weddings for $25,000. Mm-hmm. But my point, I say that a little bit in jest because I would never do that because I can't do that. And I don't want to do that either, but not because of the money piece for me. It was because I, I wouldn't want the pressure, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to photograph a wedding for $25 either yeah. because of the pressure. So there's that piece for yeah, me. I agree with that. What I'm getting at is that your t- your time and her time is worth it. Yeah. But I do understand, you know, certainly from her point of view and now from yours as well that it it do- it can get to a point where you you don't feel comfortable doing it and so that's why you're not going to do it. Well, and and there is a certain amount of push yourself, you do have to go past your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Um and if there was a demand for me to do that, if I had changed my mini session, you know, what I was doing with mini sessions, I still wasn't getting the relief um, in the fall and I still wasn't enjoying that time of year, I think, you know, and then I would have to do something different. Right. And maybe that would be, maybe that would be the change that I would definitely need to do. I don't right. know. But the circumstances would have to change dramatically for me to say, I'm ready to get out of that comfort zone and try it. <laughs> That doesn't, I mean, that, that, that doesn't say that I don't look at people and I, you know, and, and I see what their other people are charging right. as well. And, and I think I, 
I know I can do as good of a job or better than some of these prices because I look out for my own family, you yeah. know, for, for photos. Um, and I'm not saying that that doesn't, I don't take that into consideration, but then I just, I just say, well, my clients are, you know, I feel good. I feel good that I'm giving my clients <laughs> I believe this you. great I product and, yeah. and I feel, I feel good about it. I just wish there was somebody out there who would do me that favor, right? <laughs> you need to find another one of you. <laughs> Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> that really sounds horrible. I just I'm like wish there were more now. of me out there. <laughs> well, now that you said that. <laughs> that was, that's no, perfect. But, no, but I mean, I, I what I think I'm saying is there's a market for everyone. There's yep. a market for what you're willing to price. There's a market for what you're willing to pay Yes. for everyone. And ultimately, you have to love what you're doing and you have to sleep at night and now you know everything that goes through my head. On, on, on. <laughs> you just like peeling back layers of an onion. We just got right down to it. What? And I'm totally blushing now. <laughs> you are. It's great. I am. It's great. Too bad there, this wasn't a visual medium. <laughs> hey, you know what? I, I appreciate this. This was great. This you, was fun. You were a great sport and you let me kind of come after you a little bit. And that's that means a lot. I like to be pushed. You're not going to push me anywhere, but I like to be pushed. I'm, I can be pretty stubborn. I, I, I can only lead you to the, to the water. You have to drink I it yourself. I refuse to drink. <laughs> Thank you, Katie Cannon. Where can people find you? KatieCannonPhotography.com. C-A-N-N-O-N. Not like the camera. Right, right. And what about the Instagrams? Katie Joe Cannon. Okay. K-A-T-I-E-J-O Cannon. All right. K-A-N-N. O N C A N N O N. I can't believe I said K. <laughs> C A N N O N. Of course. Yeah. That's K right. K would be the first letter of your first name. That would be. Okay. Yeah. I need to work on spelling and stuff. <laughs> hey, thanks for your time. Thank you, Judd. Good to see day. you. Yeah.